Uh, it sounds like looking through your note, I mean, you don't see this rebound in energy as uh, simply a knee jerk response to the vaccine. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I do agree that the vaccine is essentially a V-shaped trade in prices for next year. So tactically, the, the catalyst is the vaccine story. However, we think that's the beginning of a much larger and deeper structural bull market in both oil and commodities. And the, what's driving that is the pandemic itself. In fact, we would argue the vaccine is a tactical catalyst. The pandemic itself is a structural catalyst. So I think the three key points that we're focused on is one, is that we've seen a structural decline in investment. We call that the revenge of the old economy. No CapEx is going into the old economy. That's gonna create um, supply shortages across the commodity complex. Here's a fact for you today. Every single commodity with the exception of cocoa and wheat are in a deficit right now. That tells you, you get that V-shaped recovery against those supply constraints, these markets are going to get tighter. The other big theme is policy-driven right. demand, and then the third one is reflation. Um, so on that last point, I mean, what's the bigger driver? You talk about the revenge of the old economy and obviously capacity constraints, as you just lined out. Um, is that the bigger dynamic here, or is it simply trying to protect yourself against rising costs in general? I would argue, you know, it, it, it's it's all of the above. Back again, so the reflate, or reflation theme, which is what, what you're talking about right here, um, that's due to um, the fact that you're seeing a substantial devaluation of the dollar. And when we start to see weakness in the dollar, it puts upward pressure across the entire commodity complex. We saw this in the 2000s. We saw this in the 70s, two other super cycle environments. We're teed up to see that exact same dynamic, and it has a feedback loop, meaning the higher the commodity prices go, the weaker the dollar. The weaker the dollar, the higher the commodity prices, and it can spiral itself up to much higher prices. Jeff, what about the Chinese recovery? How much is that playing a part in, in the price and the trajectory of oil and other commodity prices right now? Um, absolutely critical in everything, I like to say everything solid, um, both the metals as well as the agricultural commodities. Um, in particular, um, they've been fueling that recovery through infrastructure spending as well as construction, which has created a very strong base metals in bolts market. Um, you know, we've seen copper pushing to earlier this week hit up to $7,200 a ton. You know, these are prices we haven't seen in years. Um, and then in terms of thinking about agriculture, you know, we had phase one of the trade deal, but that's not what's creating that huge surge in imports. It's the fact that they have real food shortages. They killed off the hog herd during the COVID crisis. Um, and as a result, the imports of both metals and agriculture surging. This at the exact same time, they're building strategic reserves. I like to point out that what kicked off that bull market in commodities back in the 70s, in 1972, it was Russian buying of grains. We see that also, just look at a chart of soybeans and corn, Chinese are buying a lot of grains right, right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.